Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistines and took his sword and drew it out of the sheet thereof and slay him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, what did they do? They took off. This was the action that led to David's statement in the palace. And the king recognized him and said, whose father? Who is your father? Nobody will know your father's house until an enemy confronts you. There are enemies who carry your popularity. They carry your opportunity. So if you keep running from all the enemies, then you can't get ready to be small. Get ready to never be popular. Every one of you must know that not all enemies are meant to be avoided. There are enemies that carry. Some enemies are like puzzles. They are like a box. You have to go for the box, bust the box open to assess the treasure box. There's a treasure inside the stomach of some enemies. Number three, they are agents of publicity. I've said that before. Number four, never run from enemies. Confront them. If you must come to the front, then you must confront an enemy that carries your greatness. Number five, there are things that your loved ones can never do to you or for you only an enemy can. Joseph and his brothers, Genesis chapter 50, Jesus and Judas, John 13, 27, Samson and Delilah, Judges 16, verse 4. How many of you know? Let's look at Judges 16, verse 4. He said, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was what? Delilah. Look at verse 5. And the loss of the Philistines came up on her and said to her, entice him. See, we are in his great strength light. And by what means he may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And will give thee every one of us 1100 pieces of silver. Whoever is your friend, that is a friend to who is not your friend, be careful of that friend. Delilah was Samson's lover, but Delilah was a friend to the laws of the Philistine. The moment your friends begin to fraternize with those who are against your assignment or your life, just know that very soon they will sell you. Oh, somebody said, Man of God, Judas. As soon as he had relationship with the enemies of Jesus, he betrayed Jesus. It's a matter of time because evil communication will still corrupt good manners. I said something else. I said, listen, the worst person to pastor is somebody that does not have the spirit of obedience. Anybody that cannot take instruction cannot be pastored. I have a testimony of a particular family. The matter became critical. That as it were, there was already a by force year. Call the man, I said, behave. Called the woman, I said, behave. The woman said, thank you, daddy. The man said, thank you, daddy. And the both of them behaved. And they sent me a message afterwards to say, thank you, daddy. We are living a better life. That all our years in marriage has not been as sweet as these few days. All it takes is a counsel. Sir, who no go here, no go here. I've said it before. The problem with our generation is not preacher's problem. It's not hearer's problem. It's doer's problem. How many of them us practice what we are told? You heard the story of God's servant that ministered on Sunday. He said that Papa told him there's something about California. He went to Southern Africa and got the greatest affliction of his life. Four years wasted until he got to California. And in less than six months, three to six months, he became who he has never been in his lifetime. Obedience. Naaman's leprosy will continue until Naaman obeys his instruction. You can't play down on instruction and not suffer destruction. And a young man, they brought him to Papa. And Papa said to the young man, you have nothing to do in America. Go to Onicha. And the young man was hungry. Eventually went to Onicha. And from Onicha, nations began to come. He began to locate nations. One of the greatest challenges you can have in life, it will be in another man's space. Know your space. Occupy it. That's where you carry your destiny. Imagine Delilah conspiring against Samson. Not knowing. Time is my friend. If I take you through, discover that when Samson was born and the parents were trying to go against him from loving the Philistine women, you remember? The Bible says it was written in clause. It said there that I wish the parents knew that this was the purpose why he was born. He was born to kill the Philistines. So his passion was going towards Philistines because of his purpose and his assignment. So when Delilah was selling him, Delilah took the position of an enemy. But was helping Samson fulfill his destiny. Listen. If you must grow by the oppressions of enemies, then there are two characters I want to introduce to you. First 
is the character but the pool of Bethsaida. Is in John chapter 5 and 7. John chapter 5 and 7. People who some persons, not all, who have been through prolonged battles has characters like this. He said, the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But why I am coming, another one stepped down before me. You must avoid blame game. Nobody's responsible for your pain. Approach it a brutal way so you get a testimony. I hear people say they are using your star to shine. If you have star, is that why your life is like this? The star that cannot help you. Somebody is not using it and is walking. You are talking in here. You are not ashamed. When something is not happening, instead of you to look for the place where you can get it fixed, you are looking for who to blame. For 38 years it was by the pool because he kept blaming people. I have no man. I have no man. They are not fair. They are not fair. They don't show love in this place. He said he that wants a friend should show himself friendly. You are not friendly. You want a friend. People who don't give want so much. You are expecting visitation when you don't even do visitation. Nobody called me. Who have you called? He said, I have no man. Jesus was even standing. Was Jesus a woman? He was a man. Yet he was telling Jesus, I have no man. And a man was standing. No matter what the issue is. For this woman, it was the issue of blood. Have this character. Mark chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. Let this character be your character. He said, when she had heard of Jesus, like we tell you, every day we tell you about Jesus. When you hear about him, what do you do? He said, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. What do you do with what you hear? Do you press with the revelations that hit you in church? Let this be your character. When you hear, press. For she said, if I may touch by the hems of his garment, the greatest sermon you can ever hear is the one you preach to yourself. When she heard, she said to herself, when you hear the word, say to yourself. Because what you say to yourself via the word you hear, determine what becomes of your destiny. When she heard of Jesus, she said to herself, what are you saying to yourself? You are hearing me talk about Jesus now. What are you telling yourself? Finish, make her go as. Some of us are body present, spirit absent. Some we are even preaching now. You are reminding your wife, say you brought that soup out of free to defrost.